What's going on everybody? It's your boy Thrifty back with Thrifty PS Gamer Reviews. I am going to be starting a new segment called Gaming News Weekly Replay. That's right. We're just going to be looking rapid fire at certain topics throughout the week and that's it. It's going to be a short video just to give you some headlines for what's going on in gaming this week. This week is going to be the week from Sunday the 6th to set, or Saturday the 12th and so everything that's kind of gone on in between so let's dive in oh also uh, like subscribe comment share this thing out uh, we do a weekly show every single Wednesday at 8 45 p.m. Central Standard Time stop by you can support the channel by becoming a member you can do all that from the thing uh, below and yeah after that we can uh, you can use emojis, you can do all of that, and you get shout outs and stuff like that on the live streams. So, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First piece of news, let's see if I can keep this thing under 10 minutes. First piece of news is that Metaphor V Fantasio came out on the 11th and has already sold 1 million copies, period, point blank done. This has made it the fastest selling Atlas game, breaking Persona 3 Reload's record of hitting 1 million in a week. 1 million in a week versus 1 million in a day. That's awesome. Metaphor V Fantasio's October 11th global release date has already seen the Persona style game shoot up Steam's most played games list with 42,992 concurrent players at the time of this publication. That figure will no doubt uh, rise as we head into the weekend and fans in other regions get a chance to play. The game launches across PS4, PS5, Xbox XS, and, but neither Sony nor Microsoft make player numbers publicly available. It seems that that 1 million sales figure will swell to 2 million sooner rather than later. That is absolutely fantastic. Shout out to Sega, shout out to Atlas. That's amazing. This was actually my third purchase of the year for a full $70 game. And I'm really, really happy I did. Um, you actually have no idea how happy I am that I did. It is fantastic. I'm loving it. Played some of it last night. But that's not what we're here for. We're not here for commentary. We're here for headlines. Let's move on to the next one. PlayStation Plus game catalog for October. Dead Island 2, Two Point Campus, Gris, and Monkey Island, uh, Return to Monkey Island, and more. So you can battle zombies, you can do Dead Island 2, you can do Two Point Campus, the Devil... Ooh, Devil and Me. Uh, this is actually pretty good. The anthology, Dark Pictures anthology, is pretty freaking fun. I have played Man of Madon, and the game scared the piss out of me. But that doesn't speak to the quality of the game. It was an amazing game. I'm just a chicken, so I never beat it, and I probably won't. Play Gris. Gris is fun. Uh, not, I'm sorry. I want to play Gris. Gris looks fun. Whew. Going a little too fast here. Return to Monkey Island. Okay, guys, so let me just be honest. This this list is not like blow your socks away, but at the same time, it does have a little something for everybody. Even 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 bicycle fans. Look at that. Overpass 2, Tour de France. No, sorry, two different games. Overpass 2 is a game. Tour de France 2023 is a game. Tom Clancy, <clears throat> excuse me, Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Wildlands, The Last Clockwinder, and Dino Crisis along with Siren. R-Type Dimension X. All right, so quite a few games. Dino Crisis coming back, be able to play that. That'll be fun. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of games coming. Uh, you pay for the service anyways, so if you're looking to get into some of these, now is your chance. Uh, the two that I would, or the one that I would recommend is The Devil in Me, and as I said, the second one would probably be Gris. But yeah, kind of a light week, to be honest, but you know what hasn't been a, a I'm sorry, not light week, but you know what hasn't been a light week? Uh, this week in gaming, holy crap, there's been so many things that have come out. So many things that have come out. It's absolutely freaking insane how many games and DLCs and stuff have come out. So you have Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred, Silent Hill 2 Remake, Destiny 2 Revenant, uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, Starship Troopers Extermination, Metaphor Refantasio. That is absolutely bananas. That's amazing, guys. You get Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred. You get Silent Hill 2 Remake. So you get your ARPGs. You get your uh, a psychological, scary, thriller, survival horror stuff. You get Destiny 2 ongoing content. You get a 
good fighter that people are saying is super hard. You get a fun shoot 'em up, and you get a JRPG that's going to take you about a hundred hours. That's a fantastic week, and this month is not over. I'm sure next Saturday I'll be doing another video talking about the games that came out next week. It's absolutely insane. We keep getting fed very well as gamers. So. Enjoy that. Also, I know I am a PlayStation channel, but I got a lot of people who watch me from Australia. Uh, if you look at my demographics, it's actually pretty wild how many people watch me from Australia. So the Steam Deck is coming to a new region. That's right, Valve Steam Deck is finally arriving in Australia. The update on the Steam Deck distribution came directly from Valve during PAX Australia. The Steam Deck has been extremely popular gaming handheld since its launch, initially selling out entirely. The Steam Deck now has a steady supply and multiple models that fans can choose from. Being able to play nearly any game on the Steam platform on the go is a very impressive feat. While the Steam Deck ha uh, now has competitors, many eager gamers have been waiting for their chance to grab one of Valve's devices. That's actually pretty dang cool, guys. So they're going to get it. I know I have a few PC people uh, in my Discord. Uh, also, guys, you can join the Discord. The link will be in the description of the video. You can definitely join that. We talk about gaming all week long. Uh, but yeah, so the Steam Deck is coming. I think that's pretty cool. I have no use for it, but I know people who do, and it is a pretty big story, so I did kind of want to give you that headline. Now, moving on, some sad news. I never played Little Big Planet. I did play Sackboy A Big Adventure, but I never played Little Big Planet, and I did not beat Sackboy A Big Adventure. Uh, but Little Big Planet is leaving the PS4. All of its stuff, everything is going to be gone. It's leaving on October 31st. So if you wanted to get it, if you want to have it, download it now or you're going to miss out. Now, you can still get the game physically. Once it gets off the digital store, that physical price will probably go up, so you can try to buy it now if you would like. Once again, I was never part of the Little Big Planet online stuff, but I know a lot of people who were, and Sackboy, uh, Little Big Planet, and all that, they were literally pivotal during the PS4. So, anyways, yeah, kind of a sad deal. It's going bye-bye, but get it physically, and that doesn't happen. There are some benefits to physical. Next, let's get into some other things that may or may not benefit. If you were in the live stream on Wednesday, you know we covered this in depth. But Halo Studios on Sunday announced uh, that, I'm sorry, 343 announced on Sunday that, Halo, that they would be called Halo Studios, that they're switching to Unreal Engine 5, and all of this other stuff. It's interesting. There's a lot of commentary that can be done on this. I think this is because they are gearing up to put games on uh, the PS5, and when you do that, you really want to use a system and a, uh, not a system, a, um, a crud. Dadgummit, it just left me. Not an operating system. You really want to use a engine. There we go. You really want to use an engine to uh, be able that, or that can go multiple platforms and go across multiple platforms, console speaking. And so when you do that, you UE5, it can go everywhere. And so it makes sense. Also, combine this with the news from a couple weeks ago that they were looking to add a third-person mode into Halo. Yeah, guys, this thing is coming multi-plat, and it's coming multi-plat faster than probably we think. At least this game. In other words, I think the next Halo game will be multi-plat. So, yeah, that happened in the week of gaming. 343 has become Halo Studios. Kudos to Halo Studios. And with that, guys, that was the biggest news topic of the week. Uh, oh, and Nintendo shut down emulation. That's kind of cool. Uh, they closed down a site that was letting people emulate Switch content, and so that is now gone. I'm happy that the thieves can't keep thieving. So, anyways, guys, with that being said, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that like button. This has been Thrifty with the Gaming News Weekly Replay. And as always, stay thrifty.